You already know about lines in the XY plane. You spent a lot of time studying those in high school. You have a y equals mx plus b, the slope-intercept form of a line, or, or um, ax plus by plus, uh, plus c equals zero, a standard form of a line. Um, we want to look at those again, lines in the xy plane, just to see what they have to do with vectors, the equations for them. Um, and then we want to look at lines and planes in R3, so in, in XYZ space. And we're, we're, one of the reasons for going back over lines in the XY plane is so that we can look at them in a way that will be analogous to how we look at lines and planes in space. Um, so, you have Here we are in R2, in the xy plane. And as I said, you've almost certainly looked at slope-intercept form for lines. So let me write lines over here. You've almost certainly looked at the slope-intercept form for lines. And then more generally, you could have ax plus by plus c equals 0, where not both a and b are 0. So the nice way to write that, ab is not zero, zero, right? and this, this is a standard form of a line, a standard form. Um, it's, it's slightly more general than the slope-intercept form because it allows for lines of the form x equals a constant, so vertical lines where the slope would be undefined. So standard form is nice for that reason. Um, all right, what does this have to do with vectors? And can we say anything more interesting about equations for lines in the xy plane than, than what you've seen in high school? Well, suppose, suppose x naught, y naught. So suppose we've got a point on the lines. Is a point on the line given by ax plus by plus c equals zero, where not both a and b are zero. So suppose x naught y naught is a particular point on there, then that means exactly that ax naught plus by naught plus c equals zero. So you can solve for c. So you can say what c is in terms of a point on the line. c then is negative ax naught minus by naught. So if you take your equation in, in standard form, you can now write, okay, it's ax plus by plus c equals zero, but we now know c is this. It where x naught y naught is a point on the plane uh, line. So you get this, and if you group the x stuff together and the y stuff together, you get a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught equals zero. So <laughs> well now we're going to write this in a more vectory kind of way. This is the same as saying the dot product of a, b with the vector x minus x naught, y minus y naught is zero. Remember dot product, it means you multiply the corresponding components and you add, so you just get a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught equals zero, you get this equation. But this is the displacement vector from x naught y naught to any point x, y, so another way you can write this is a, B dotted with the displacement vector from X naught, Y naught to X, Y equals zero, uh, equals the number zero. So what is this? If you look at what's going on, we've got, here's our line. There's a point on the line, X naught, Y naught, and what this says is a point x, y is on the line if and only if the displacement vector from x naught, y naught to x, y, so here you are at some other point on the line, 
x, y, if and only if this displacement vector has a dot product of 0 with a, b. But remember, a dot product being 0 is exactly the same as saying a, b is perpendicular. The vector a, b is perpendicular to this, this other vector. So it means that a, b, which we're assuming is a non-zero vector, is normal to the line, perpendicular to the line. Right? A point x, y is on the line if and only if when you draw this displacement vector from x0, y0 to x, y, it's perpendicular to this fixed vector a, b. Well, so that's, this is a new way of looking at the standard form of a line. What What's what you're seeing is exactly that. You let in the a, b, not the zero vector, then um, a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught equals zero describes a line containing the point x naught y naught perpendicular to the vector n. So, so I'm writing n for normal vector. So you can put normal to the vector. a, b, if you want. This also means you know, um, that so the standard form of the line, so given ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a and b are not the 0 vector, um, a normal vector, a non-zero normal vector, to the line, is trivial to read off of the standard form of the equation for the line, you just take the coefficients in front of x and y. So yeah, standard form of line is, you should think of it as being equivalent to having a point on the line and a vector perpendicular to or normal to the line. Um, so let's just do a quick Let's do a quick example of this that <laughs> will be a new way of looking at something that you should have learned in high school. So an example suppose you have two lines. given n, now we're going to use slope-intercept form, given by, I'm just going to write given in slope-intercept form, but given by y equals some slope times x plus some its y-intercept, and y equals some other slope, x plus its intercept, where we're going to assume neither Neither of the slopes is zero, where m1 is unequal to zero and m2 is unequal to zero. Then what? Then well, we could write these in standard form. So I'm going to put the y's on the other side. Um, <coughs> this gives m1 
1x minus y plus b1 equals 0, and m2x minus y plus b2 equals 0. So, you can read off normal vectors to these lines, uh, non-zero normal vectors, to the lines given by these equations very easily. So, um, in 1, our first normal vector, is coefficient in front of x, comma, the coefficient in front of y is m1, comma, minus 1, and there's a second normal vector to this line. It is m2 minus 1. These are normal vectors to the lines. They're non-zero, clearly. Our normal vectors to the lines. Okay, so, <laughs> so what do I want to say? I want to say that lines are perpendicular to each other if and only if normal vectors to the lines are perpendicular to each other, or non-zero normal vectors to the lines. So if you've got one line and you've got another line and you want to know when they're perpendicular to each other, well, if this is your first line, we'll call it L sub 1, a normal vector to that, I'm going to draw it at this point of intersection, would be here. And if you call this one L2, a normal vector to that line, drawn at this point of intersection, would be here. And yeah, the lines themselves form a 90 degree angle or at their point of intersection, so are perpendicular to each other, if and only if the normal vectors are perpendicular to each other. You want this to be 90 degrees, well then this would be 90 degrees. So the lines, the two given lines, are perpendicular to each other. perpendicular to each other. But we know how to test whether two vectors are perpendicular to each other. You take the dot product and see if you get zero. So this is IE in one dotted with in two is 0. But n1 is m1 minus 1. m1 comma minus 1. And n2 is m2 comma minus 1 equals 0. And that dot product is m1 times m2 plus minus 1 times minus 1, so plus 1. So if and only if m1 times m2 plus 1 equals 0. The way you're used to seeing this, I've assumed m1 and m2 are not 0. Subtract 1 and divide. You get m1 is minus 1 over m2. Or you could have done it the other way. m2 is minus 1 over m1. What does this say? It says two lines given in slope-intercept form are perpendicular if and only if their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Hopefully you, you learned that. And um, you heard that at some point in high school, but this is how you do it with vectors and dot products. All right. Um, we want to describe another way, or give another way of describing a line in the xy plane. So we're going to what we just looked at, corresponding to the standard form of a line, is if you're given a point on a line and a vector perpendicular to the line, how do you quickly write down an equation for the line? That's what we did. But it might seem more normal to you, and to a lot of people, to describe a line in the xy plane by specifying a point on the line and not a vector 
perpendicular to the line, but a vector parallel to the line. So specify a non-zero vector. So specify like this vector, which again I'll call a b, but now, and it's not the zero vector. But understand, I'm now using a b for the components of a vector that's parallel to the line, not normal to the line. How does this change in a, what you write for equation and equation or equations for the line? Well, it changes it quite a bit because now a point is on the line. So some other point is on the line if and only if the displacement vector from x naught y naught to x y is parallel to your given vector v. So x y is on the line if and only if the displacement vector from x naught y naught to x y, well that's the vector x minus x naught, y minus y naught, that's the displacement vector, is parallel to the vector v. But parallel vectors, just their scalar multiples of each other. So if and only if x naught y naught minus uh, x minus x naught comma y minus y naught equals some scalar multiple of our fixed kind of directional vector v for some scalar for some scalar, so some real number, for some scalar t. If you separate, if you separate this, you write this as xy minus x naught y naught, and I'll put in that v is a b, and I'll put the x naught y naught over there, you get a point xy is on the line if and only if there exists a scalar t such that this is true. This is called a vector equation for the line. t, we introduced this scalar t, so you've got a new variable in there. Understand the point. This is different from how we described a line perpendicular to a given vector. A point xy is on this line if and only if there exists a t such that xy is x naught y naught plus t times ab. So you've got this point on the plane. You've got this parallel uh, point on the line. You've got this parallel vector to the line. You get points on the line just by picking any real number t, and that gives you all the points on the line. Um, so it's different. You know, this extra t, we call this a parameter. So we call this a parameter. Um, and it's just a different way of describing line. You can break it up into the components. If you break this up into the components, it says that x needs to be x naught plus t times a. I'm looking at just the first components. And the y, y equals y naught plus t times b. So you can split those, that one vector equation for a line into two equations. These are generally called parametric equations for the line. It's um, There's a, well, an interesting terminology issue. We sometimes would refer to this as a parameterization of the line also, and a parametric equation because we introduced a parameter. So um, I'll, I'll try to be careful and always call this a vector equation for the line, but in some context you might refer to this as a parameterization of the line or a parametric equation for the line. This is a parametric equation for the line. These are parametric equations, plural. That might be the only distinction you hear, but it's not as though thinking this way and this way are different. Those contain essentially the same data, so you, know, you should think of both of them as 
parametric equations and the vector equations. Just this has it broken up into components. Once it's written like this, you can eliminate the t, assuming a and, uh, a and b are not 0. So if a is not 0 and b is not 0, then you can solve the parametric equations for t, and you get t equals x minus x naught over a, and t also equals y minus y naught over b. Well, this, this equation that doesn't have the t in it, oops, y minus y naught, this no longer has a parameter in it, and this is called a symmetric equation for the line. All right. <laughs> now I might have made lines in the plane confusing for you. You understood them before I started. <laughs> um, when we looked at the standard equation for a line, um, that's when you're given a point on the line, or you produce a point on, you can produce a point on the line. But what's important there is the a and the b, the coefficients that you see, are, give you the components of a vector normal to the line. What's all this stuff, this vector equation for a line, parametric equations for a line, symmetric equation for a line? This is what happens if the data that you're given is a vector parallel to the line instead of normal to the line. And it just depends on what data you're given or what data is easy for you to produce that determines how you want to write equations for the line. Um, uh, yeah, should you memorize all of these forms? You know, you can derive, you should remember dot product and normal vector. Picture a normal vector to the line and, oh yeah, I would dot that with the displacement vector and need to get zero to describe a line normal to the vector. And then for parametric equations, you should just picture, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm given a vector parallel to the line, so another point, x, y, other than x naught, y naught, is on line if and only if the displacement vector is parallel to that. And so it needs to be a scalar multiple of v. I'm saying that you don't exactly want to memorize all of these formulas um, in their final forms. You just want to remember how you get them, and then you can quickly write them down. Um, all right, so let's look at an example. Um, let's look at, this will be a quick example. So let's give a vector equation. Parametric equations. And a symmetric equation. for the line containing minus one one and parallel to the vector v equals two three. All right. So what do you do? <laughs> well, um, it's easy to write down a vector equation for the line. It's just, and if you're going to memorize something, you know, memorize that one. You know, x minus x naught. Uh, you take your point that's on the line, 
um, minus 1, 1, right, plus t times a vector parallel to the line, 2, 3. That's it. That is a vector equation for the line that contains the point minus 1, 1 and is parallel to the vector 2, 3. And it means you get every point on the line by picking different real numbers for t. Or a point is on the line if and only if there exists a real number t so that this equality holds. Um, how easy is it to write down the parametric equations? Well, you just read off the components. This would be x equals minus 1 plus t times 2. I'll write 2t. And y equals 1 plus t times 3, but I'll write 3t. So there are parametric equations for the line. That was easy. Should you memorize, you really, I mean, if you're going to memorize something, memorize this, then these follow easily. And then the symmetric equation, or asymmetric equation, follows easily. You just solve for t, both places, and then leave it out of your final answer. So if you're solving for t here, you would get t equals, put the minus 1 over there, so you get x plus 1 divided by 2. But that has to equal the t down here, which is y minus 1 over 3. So a symmetric equation for this line, this one. You can do this very quickly. Um, I should relate this to what we did earlier with equations for lines in standard form and normal vectors. If you simplify or do the algebra to write this in standard form, so multiply, you know, we can say cross multiply, you get or multiply both sides by 6, you get 3 times x plus 1 equals 2 times y minus 1. So you can write this as 3 times x plus 1 minus 2 times y minus 1 equals 0. Now whether you expand this into standard form or not, what you can see is from, from what we did just a few minutes ago, that minus 1, minus 1, 1 is a point on this line. Well, we knew that. And if you read off these coefficients, 3 minus 2 is a normal vector to the line. Not a parallel vector, a normal vector. Well, is it really? Well, yeah, because 2, 3 is parallel to the line. And our vector v is 2, 3. And this dotted with this is certainly 0. You get 6 minus 6. So, yeah, good. Everything's working out right. Math works again. Yeah, here are four different ways of writing equations for that line. Um, in a way, they're all the same. But, you know, it um, it's, just depends on what data you're given. Given a parallel vector, the first thing you write down is this. All right. Um, maybe before I leave this, I'll say, suppose you were given just the data of two points. Then how would you write down a vector equation for the line? Well, you want a point on the line and a vector parallel to the line. If you're given two points, well, you get one point on the line, just take either one of the points. How do you get a vector parallel to the line? Take the displacement vector between your two points, and that vector will be parallel to the line, and then you use that for v. All right. I think I've beaten, beaten equations for lines in the plane to death now, but it, it's a good setup for now we want to look at planes in space and lines in space. I'm going to have to appeal to your intuition um, about lines and planes. In fact, I already have. We haven't technically defined a line or a plane. And you might think, well, I know what they are. Why do I need to define it? Fine. But later in the section of the book, you could read about what we really mean by lines and planes. But let's look at lines and planes in R3. So suppose you're given 
a point in space and you want to discuss a plane through that point like we discussed a line through a point. Okay, great. So here's a point x naught, y naught, z naught in space. We want to give some data that describes a plane to us that passes through that point. Well, certainly a single vector in the plane won't do it. You could picture rotating this plane around that vector. That doesn't do it. Um, but how about a vector normal to the plane? Like we took a vector normal to the line in R2. How about a non-zero vector normal to the plane? Well, then it should be intuitively obvious, that's, that's my hope anyway, that that data, a point on the plane and a vector normal to the plane, um, completely determines the plane, a non-zero vector normal to it. And again, we do what we did for lines, but it's how do you know whether a point x, y, z is on the plane? Well, if it's supposed to be, if the plane is supposed to be all the, is supposed to be normal to this given vector, it should mean, again, like it did for lines in R2, that the vector, the displacement vector from x0, y0, z0 to x, y, z is perpendicular to n. So we need n times the displacement vector is x, y, z minus x0, y0, z0. And we need them to be perpendicular, so their dot product needs to be zero. But this is easy. This gives us, this gives us the equation A times, so this is, let me write one more step. This is ABC dotted with X minus X naught, Y minus Y naught, Z minus Z naught equals zero. So you get a standard equation for a plane, well, or you would if you expanded it, A times X minus X naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught equals zero. And this is what you want to remember, that given a vector normal to a plane and a point on the plane, you can instantly write down an equation describing all the points on the plane. A non, I should say a non-zero vector normal to the plane every time. If I forget to say non-zero, just assume that I'm in it. Um, you can expand this and collect the minus ax naught, minus b y naught, minus c z naught, right? As I said, a standard equation for the plane. I would think of either one of these as a standard equation, but some people wouldn't. Right? You just get some constant that's minus a naught, uh, minus ax naught, minus b y naught, minus c z naught, uh, and call that d. But Here's a standard equation for a plane where a, b, and c are not all zero. And you can just easily read off a normal vector to the plane by reading off the coefficients of x, y, and z. So that's very nice. It's so nice that whenever you're told to write an equation for a plane in space, the data you want to produce, you want to produce a point on the plane and a vector normal to the plane, and then you just immediately write this equation. All right, let's look at an example. It'll be a quick example. <coughs> so an example, give an equation for a plan. an equation for the plane containing the point 3, 1, minus 2 and normal to the vector The vector 5 minus 3, 7. You should really hope to be given problems like this. 
because <laughs> they're incredibly easy. How do you give an equation for that plane? Uh, these components are the coefficients. And then it's just x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught. So it's, you just write it down instantly. It's uh, 5 times x minus 3 minus 3 times y minus 1 plus 7 times z minus minus 2, so plus 2, equals 0. And that's all you do. There is an equation for that plane. The plane that passes through the point 3, 1, minus 2 and is normal to the vector 5 minus 3, 7. Well, that was easy. Um, of course, you can do harder problems. But first, I would like to discuss how you parameterize uh, a line in space. Um, actually, let me, let me not do that. Let me kind of do a reverse problem from one of these first, and then we'll parameterize lines in space and do a couple of problems with that. So what's another problem you could be given about planes? without any reference to lines in space. Um, another example consider the plane. Given by six X minus five Y plus three Z minus seven equals zero. Find a normal vector to the plane and a point on the plane. It's kind of the backwards problem from the last one. A non-zero normal vector. We don't, want to, we don't want you to be able to just say, oh, the zero vector is normal to everything. Ha, ha, ha. A non-zero vector. A non-zero normal vector and a point on the plane. Okay, well, what do you do? Well, the normal vector is easy. You read off the coefficients in front of x, y, and z. So, a non-zero normal vector, n, 6, minus 5, 3. Phew, that was a struggle. 6 minus 5, 3, great. There's a normal vector to the plane. How do you produce points on the plane? Basically, you pick anything you want for x and y and solve for z, or anything you want for y and z and solve for x. You just plug in two of the, pick whatever you want for two of the variables and solve for the third one. Um, there are particularly nice things you can pick. You can pick zeros. So, for instance, a point, points on the plane, you're trying to produce, I'm going to actually produce three points on the plane. We're only asked for one, but um, you can pick y equals zero and z equals zero and solve for x. If you solve for x then, well these two are 0, you put the 7 over there, x will be 7 sixth. So there's x equals 7 sixth, y equals 0, and z equals 0. This is, you know, y equals 0, z equals 0 describes the x-axis. Um, this is usually referred to like you're probably used to in the xy plane for the y-intercept and the x intercept where you hit the x and y axes. Same thing here. The x axis in R3 is where y and z are 0. So you set y and z equal to 0, you solve for x. This is the x intercept. Um, so that's a point on the plane. Just to, we will only ask for a point, but I'm going to produce the other intercept just as an example, but you don't have to. Um, if you pick x and z are 0. So x and z are 0. You would put the 7 over there, divide by the minus 5. You get y is minus 7 fifths. So this is the y-intercept of that plane. This is telling you where the plane hits the x-axis. This is where the plane hits the y-axis. Where does the plane hit the z-axis? You'd set x and y equal to 0 and solve for z. So you get 0, 0. 7 thirds, this would be the z-intercept. All right. Um, 
Now we want to look at how do you describe lines in space. You might think, oh, I just give an equation. No, we just saw that one, one equation like this describes a plane. You might, two equations like this would describe a line if they intersect correctly. You, know, you picture two planes intersecting in space, they should intersect in a line. We will see that, but that's not the nicest way to describe a line in space, or the easiest, maybe. But the nice thing is parametrizing a line in space looks just like parametrizing a line in the xy plane. Suppose you've got a point x0, y0, z0 in space, and you've got a non-zero vector parallel to the line. So there's some non-zero vector. V is abc, so not the zero vector then you do exactly what we did in the xy plane, which is why I wanted to do it in the xy plane. So here's your vector v, a, a point, is on the line if and only if, just like in the xy plane, if and only if the displacement vector from x0, y0, z0 to xy, z is parallel to this vector, which means it should be a scalar multiple. So you once again end up with a vector equation for the line, x, y, z, the displacement vector is this. You want it to be a scalar multiple of your fixed parallel vector, a, b, c. So you get this, and typically we'd put this part over there and write a vector equation for the line in space, x0, y0, z0. So you take your point that you know is on the line, and then you add scalar multiples of the vector that you know is parallel to the line. Again, this is a vector equation or line. Of course, you can read off three separate, you can read off three separate parametric equations just by reading off the components. You get x equals x naught plus t times a, which I'll, I'll write as a times t y equals y naught plus b times t, and z equals z naught plus c times t. So these are again called parametric equations for the line. And again, you can eliminate the t's and get symmetric but now it'll be equations for the line because what happens is if you solve for t each place, assuming a, b, and c are not zero, so you can do that, you get t equals x minus x naught over a. And here you get t equals y minus y naught over b. And here you get z minus z naught over c. And then you drop the reference to the t. So these, these are, it's depending on how you count, you can think of them as two equations involving x, y, and z because you can split it up as, well, th this equals this and this equals this. Um, but usually we just write all three of them are equal and call these symmetric equations for the line. And if you think of it as a pair of equations involving x, y, and z, so maybe that equation and this equation, then this describes a plane in space. This describes a plane in space. And the line that you're getting is the intersection of those two planes. Um, but really, you know, the nicest way to think of a line in space is parametrically, or whether you write it as a vector equation or separate parametric equations, you want to think, I want a point on the line and a vector parallel to the line and then an equation, a point x, y, z is on the line if and only if there exists a scalar t such that x0, y0, z0 plus t times a, b, c equals x, y, z. Um, so, you know, just there's easy examples and there are hard examples. An easy example, or actually none of them are really hard, but An easy example of a problem about this 
would be give a vector equation with a line containing the point oh, minus 2, 0, 3, and parallel to the vector to the vector v equals 5, 7, 1. And also, Describe the line as the intersection of two planes. This is this is easy. You know, when you know what you're doing, we've got a point on the line, a vector parallel to the line, quick. What's a vector equation for the line? It's just x, y, z equals the point that you know is on the line, minus 2, 0, 3, plus t times 5, 7, 1. There. And I should say there's nothing special about the parameter name being t. It could be r, s. Those are kind of our favorite parameter names. But it could be essentially anything other than x, y, and z. Those would be bad choices. Um, but yeah, there's a vector equation for the line. And then if you have to write, describe it as the line as the intersection of two planes, well that means you want, that's a code phrase for find the symmetric equations. To find the symmetric equations, don't memorize the answer from before. You know, if you're going to memorize something, memorize the vector equation, then write this out in components. Oh, this means x equals minus 2 plus 5t means y equals 0 plus 7t, so y is 7t, and it means z equals 3 plus t times 1, so just plus t. And then you solve all three of them for t, and just don't write that everything equals t in the end. So if you solve this one for t, you get x plus 2 over 5 equals t. In this one, you would get equals y over 7, and then this one you would get equals z minus 3. Right? I just solve for t in each line. And then just, right, there are symmetric equations for the line. So if you want the intersection of two planes, two planes that you could use are the planes described by, here's one plane, x plus 2 over 5 equals y over 7. And the other plane is y over 7 equals z minus 3. There are equations for two planes whose intersection is exactly the line that we're talking about. All right. I'd like to put this, I'd like to do one more problem. And I, you know, I kind of want to put together the stuff we've done with lines and planes into one kind of big problem. It won't be that difficult. You just break things up into steps. But let's do it. So, what's our problem? Example. Let P be the plane given by 3x plus 2y minus z plus 6 equals 0. Let L be the line through the points five three zero and 6, 2, 2. Determine. 
determine if P and L intersect each other. And if they do, find the point or, or points. of intersection. All right, typically you would expect a line in space and a plane in space to intersect. But if the line is parallel to the plane and not contained in the plane, so here's a plane, here's a line, then they wouldn't intersect. If the line actually lies in the plane, we'd usually still say it's parallel, but lies in the plane, well, then there'd be an infinite number of points of intersection. So if the line lies in the plane, you get an infinite number of points of intersection. If the line's parallel to the plane but doesn't lie in it, you get no points of intersection. But this typical case would be that the line and the plane intersect in a single point. So let's see what we've got. Here's an equation describing the plane. We need to produce some equation for the line, and all we're given is two points. How do you do that? The, the way you want to describe a line in space. You want a point on the line. Well, we've got two of those. And you want a vector parallel to the line. We don't have a vector parallel to the line. We have two points on the line. How do you get a vector parallel to the line? You use the displacement vector between those two points. So, um, so all right, v equals the displacement vector between those two points, 6, 2, 2, minus 5, 3, 1. Uh, 530. Let's try that again. 622530. That displacement vector is 1 minus 1, 2. And I just subtracted the x components 1, 2 minus 3, minus 1, 2 minus 0, 2. So this is a vector parallel to the line. Well, now we've got a point on the line. In fact, we have two points on the line and a vector parallel to the line we can easily write down a vector equation for the line. It's, I'm going to just pick the, the first point, but it doesn't matter. 5, 3, 0 plus t times this vector. So there's a vector equation for the line. Uh, parametric equations for the line. x equals 5 plus t. y equals 3 minus t, and x equals 5 plus t. I'm reading off the first component. x equals 5 plus t times 1. y equals 3 t plus t times minus 1. And z equals 0 plus t times 2, plus 2t. Two there are parametric equations for the line. How do we determine if this line intersects the plane? Easiest way, take these parametric equations jam them in to the equation for the plane, solve for t. If you can solve for t and you just get one t value, then there's one point of intersection, you put back in what t is and you find it. Um, if you get the, the equations impossible, so there are no t's, then the line and the plane don't intersect. If the t's completely drop out of the equation and you get something like zero equals zero, then they intersect no matter what t is, which means the line's contained in the plane. But let's just check. All right. The equation for our plane, so these are parametric equations for the line. Our equation for the plane that we were given was 3x plus 2y minus z plus 6 equals 0. So now we're going to put in x is this. To find the points of intersection, we're going to look at can we solve 3 times 5 plus t plus 2 times 3 minus t minus z, so minus 2t plus 6 equals 0? Well, you just try to solve for t, so we get 15 plus 3t plus 6 minus 2t minus 2t plus 6 
equals zero. Let me double check. 15 plus 3t, 6 minus 2t, minus 2t plus 6 equals zero. Yes. Uh, our t terms, 3t minus 2t minus 2t, we end up with a minus t. And then constant terms, we've got a 15 plus 6 plus 6, so we get 27. All right, so we get t should be negative 27. Um, that's what we're getting for t, negative 27. Um, what's the point then? Put in t is minus 27, and you see what you get. When we get, when t is minus 27, the point that we get is x is 5 minus 27, so that's minus 22. Y is 3 minus minus 27, so that's 3 plus 27, so we get 30. And z is 2t, so we get z is minus 54. That's what we're getting, that our point of intersection is minus 22, 30, minus 54. If you want to check, this is right. I mean, we produced it by plugging the t in here, or what's the same thing, plugging it in here. If you want to check that it's correct, you should, you should plug in to here and make sure you get something that's correct. What we're getting, if x is minus 22, we're getting minus 66 plus 60, so that's minus, we're getting minus 66 plus 60, that is minus 6, uh, this looks wrong to me. I get minus 66 plus 60, so I'm getting minus 6, uh, that's not right, so something's messed up. 5t, 3t, 2t, plugged in, all right, let's check this quickly, minus z plus 6, 15 plus 3t, 6 minus 2t, minus 2t plus 6, I get minus t equals, ah, ah, I did screw up, I get, mm, yes, you probably noticed this, haha, -ha. <laughs> we get, we do get minus t, and we do get plus 27, but they're on the same side. Oh well, live and learn. Good thing we checked. We get plus 27 equals 0. So t is not minus 27. t is plus 27. Hmm. Good thing we checked. So let's try again. If t is 27, you get x is 32. Here you get minus 24. And here you get plus 54. All right. So let's see if this works. We're getting 32 minus 24 and positive 54. Let's check again. <laughs> so now what are we getting? We're getting 96 minus 48, so that's plus 48, minus 54, which is minus 6 plus 6 equals 0. Phew! That works much better. All right. Be careful which side things are on. And check your work. Um, so that's our point of intersection, 32 minus 24, 54. Um, try to remember, you know, you're probably comfortable with lines in the plane. For lines in space, you want a point on the line and a vector parallel to the line, and then you just instantly write down the vector equation, uh, a vector equation for the line. For a plane in space, the data you want is a point on the plane and a vector normal to the plane. And then you instantly write down in a standard form for the plane. And if you're given other data, you want to produce that data. If you're given two points on a line, you want to produce a vector parallel to the line. Um, no matter what data you're given to describe a line in space, you want to produce a point on the line, a vector parallel to the line. 
To describe a plane in space, you want to produce a point on the plane and a vector normal to the plane. Regardless of what data you start with, that's what you want to produce. We'll see more of this in later sections.